Welcome back everyone. I'm just going to expand a little bit on the tutorial we did uh, the other day looking at the super heterodyne receiver block diagram and just actually apply it to some real world circuits. So let's get started. So in the last tutorial we talked about how the super heterodyne receiver works. I just wanted to expand on that a little bit today and focus on the front end of the receiver. As we spoke, uh, the aerial feeds to an RF filter, generally an RF amplifier to raise that signal to something that's workable and feeds that into a mixer and we have a local oscillator that is tuned in relation to that RF filter and its signal is also applied to the mixer and the result of the mixer gives the original RF signal, the original local oscillator signal, the sum and the difference signals which we then use an IF filter to filter either the sum or the difference signal and treat that as a intermediate frequency and amplify that accordingly. So today what I wanted to do is take a look at basically everything from the antenna through to the output of the IF filter and take a look at some actual real world circuits and see how it's actually implemented. First up I wanted to have a look at it implemented uh, using valve technology. Now in an exercise to save costs, what we often find is although the block diagram specifies all these particular bits as separate modules, we may find one device that does numerous of those. So let's take the same approach that we did with the block diagram and start at the aerial. The aerial you'll note feeds into an air-cooled transformer and you'll note that there's actually a capacitor effectively across this coil and that becomes the tuned RF filter that we we're talking about and you'll note that this dotted line here denotes that that tuning capacitor is ganged uh, with this device over here and which is forming another tank circuit with this other uh, air cord transformer. The signal from that tank circuit on the antenna is actually fed to the grid terminal of this particular valve. Now this particular valve is a dual element valve. It's a hexode triode valve. So hexode one, two, three, four, five, six elements and the triode having the three elements. Effectively, we have the filtered RF signal being applied to the grid of this hexode element. If we take a look at that other capacitor here in this tank circuit and transformer, you'll note that that particular tank circuit is in the anode circuit of the triode. And you'll also note that the other side of that transformer is feeding to the grid of the triode element. So this triode is effectively the actual local oscillator. With positive feedback through this transformer onto the grid, this triode will actually um, oscillate at the local oscillator frequency that's required. And you'll also note that internally in the actual valve, the grid signal in the triode is fed through to another grid in the hexode. So in this hexode element, we have the RF signal on this grid and we have the local oscillator signal on this grid. This valve is being operated in a nonlinear fashion, so any device that's operating as a nonlinear device will actually mix frequencies. So on the anode, we will actually have the local oscillator signal, the RF signal, and the sum and the difference frequencies. 
And you'll note that in the anode circuit, we actually have another tank circuit with a capacitor and a coil or an air cord transformer. And you'll note that actually both sides of that air cord transformer have trimmer capacitors. And these particular tank circuits are tuned to the intermediate frequency. So this becomes the IF filter and the signal here will be fed off to the IF amplifier. There's a couple of other things I've, I've mentioned, I guess. The automatic gain signal is uh, fed in the bottom here through this resistor and it's effectively applied through that tank circuit uh, onto the grid of the actual valve. So it's controlling the gain of that particular valve to a degree. So as the signal strength increases, this signal will actually uh, reduce and thus cut the valve off to a degree. As you can see, we've got uh, one valve with two particular devices within it, I guess, and it's actually amplifying the RF signal, mixing the frequencies together, and actually being operated as the local oscillator as well. Okay, well, let's have a look at a transistor circuit now. Okay, so here we are with a transistor circuit, now, interestingly enough, with the valve circuit, there are actually two elements within the one envelope, a hexode and a triode, but you'll note here that there's actually only one transistor. So again, in an exercise to reduce costs, a lot of circuits for you know, cheap transistor radios would just use one device to provide the amplification, the mixing, and the local oscillator function. More expensive units would have a separate device for the local oscillator. However, let's take a look at this and um, see how we go. I guess the other thing you'll note is there isn't actually an antenna uh, terminal on this particular circuit. So on this circuit, we've got what's known as a ferrite rod with coils on it. And this is actually what is used to pick up the uh, radio station signals for the actual radio. So down the bottom here, we've got the same old culprits, a couple of tuning capacitors which are ganged together. So we know that one's going to be for the RF filter and one will be for the local oscillator frequency. And if we have a look at uh, this first one on this side, you'll note we've got a simple tank circuit here, and this is the actual RF filter. So basically this tank circuit will be tuned to the frequency of the radio station that you want. And this other coil on the ferrite rod will actually pick up that signal. And you'll note that that signal is actually applied to the base of this particular transistor. So here we have the RF filtered signal effectively on the actual base of this device. Okay, so let's take a look at the other tank circuit now and the device itself. And you'll note that there's an air-cooled transformer here with one coil in the collector circuit and one coil with a tap in this coil here, which is actually also effectively being fed uh, back to the base of that particular transistor. So this tank circuit here will be tuned to the frequency of the local oscillator and there's a positive feedback circuit between the coil in the collector and the coil in the base. So we've got this uh, transistor forming the local oscillator. Now, the device is also being biased in such a way that it's operating as a nonlinear device. So at the collector here, we will have the local oscillator signal we will have the RF signal and we'll have the sum and the difference signals just as we did in the valve circuit. And you'll note if we follow the collector circuit back up to the uh, supply rail, 
that there's another tuned circuit here and this particular tank circuit is actually tuned to the IF frequency so this becomes our IF filter and of course this other coil here is fed to the IF stage for amplification. So similar to before, we've actually got one device in this case, which is actually forming the function of the RF amplifier, the local oscillator, and the actual mixer itself. So I'm hoping that helps to actually visualize how that block diagram is actually applied to a real world circuit. If you like what I'm doing, then please like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel. And if you click on the little bell icon, you'll get notified when I actually create more content. So thanks very much and see you next time.